There's a language. So when I begin to pray, I need to become aware that I'm building my spirit man and I have to begin to look on the inside, not on the outside. Most often when we think about praying or talking to God or God, we think of him seated in heaven, which is true. But the Bible also says, I will come and make my abode in you. God is not limited. God is not limited by space or by time. God is above all that. Our puny little mind may not be able to comprehend this, but the truth of the matter is that He's in heaven and also in your heart. One of the great men of God who really developed this a lot was John G. Lake. He moved in that consciousness. And it is said that one day he went to meet this woman who had lots of problems in her body, physical body, a lot of sickness and disease. She began to tell him about all, his prob all her problems and she said, okay. And then he explained to her about Christ in her. And she said, man of God, please lay your hands on me and I will be healed. And you know, John G. Lake was powerfully used of God by laying on of hands and all kinds of stuff. He said, I refuse. I will not lay hands. I will not lay hands on you. Because he was trying to develop her understanding of the, of the one that is inside. Let me tell you, we've heard these phrases many times. You live life from inside out. Where is the kingdom of God? Inside. But we're always looking for answers outside. This is the problem. God has deposited it in us because He Himself is in us. But see, this is where praying in tongues plays a very important and vital role. Because one of the things that happens by praying much in the Holy Ghost is your spirit man is activated and strengthened to pick up the frequency on which God operates. When you don't understand the frequency on which God operates, you pray and you pray and you pray and you don't seem to get results. It turns into religion. Because now you don't stop praying, but also more than faith, doubt is developing in your heart whether God will ever do it. And you don't stop because you feel like, if I'm a Christian, I have to pray. There is no evidence. There is no testimony. There is nothing. So, remember something. We have to spend much time praying in the Holy Spirit, but with the awareness that He is in us. I said, when you start praying, don't start talking. Don't start talking. When you go into the presence of somebody that you honor, will you be the first one to talk? No. No. Let's say, for example, you're invited by somebody, a prominent person. The first thing you might say is good morning or then you stop because you want them to talk to you. So when I come into the presence of God, I should not religiously begin to talk. Calm yourself down. I told them this morning, it's got to do with atmosphere. You have to create an atmosphere of His presence. Everything has to do with atmosphere. Remember, in the heavenly realm, there are frequencies. Spiritual frequencies that you operate on. You know what music is? Music is a language in the realm of the Spirit. What are the angels doing all the time? 
not just saying holy 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 i'm sure there's a tune to it there's a language so when i begin to pray i need to become aware that i'm building my spirit man and i have to begin to look on the inside not on the outside what is the lord saying out of the belly shall flow so there is some activity that is happening here because it is a, 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 a encounter between the Holy Spirit and your spirit. So something must begin to happen when you pray. And out of that is birthed the living waters. So he said, I refuse to pray. And then he said, sit down. And he began to talk again about the one that is inside her. She was an extremely wonderful lady, he said. Lovely Christian, but was bound, sick to the core. She loved the Lord. For many years she was troubled. But as, she, as he began to share with her about the reality of the presence of God, of the one inside her eyes began to open and then suddenly she said, I got it and she was completely healed. I didn't share this to excite you. I shared this to challenge you. The blood of Jesus that is, that is working in our lives, the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us from all sin, has impacted our spirit. The impact that God has need not be limited only to your spirit realm. But as you become aware and let the spirit of God flow, that impact will now move forward into the outer realms of the soul and the body. So when, if I'm sick in my body, I need to close my eyes as I begin to worship God, I begin to pray, and I'm asking God to heal me. See, let's say for example, it's your kidney. See the power of God flowing through that kidney, flushing out whatever that is. Thank you, Lord. It can't be like that. Because when you made my kidney, it was not made like that. It's an anomaly for my kidney to be like that. No, Lord, I thank you. It may not heal immediately, but keep working on it.